Good afternoon and welcome back to the Touchline on Y254 Max Olwasika is my name. It's the fan favorite segment, the fan zone. Remember later on we're discussing matters how sports can spur economy. There is an indication that sport pesa is back. I don't know how to raise that. And of course matters to do with finance and football. There was a summit that took place sponsored by Safari mobile service provider that will be forming the base of our discussion of course a lot of talking points with regards to that sector but right now is matters football international headlines and we saw Spain thrashing Germany 6 nil quite an upset Fred Openda is a man who's missed in action I don't know where he's been Fred how have you been man I've been good uh, <coughs> ups and downs I was a little bit sick so that's why I've not been around for and you quite. see nowadays when you say you are sick you have to be specific <laughs> <laughs> what were you suffering of, of, from? Of course, of course, not COVID. <laughs> but of course, but even if it's COVID, we are not stigmatizing. <laughs> COVID is there, and of course, we public about it. Most yeah. of <clears throat> us have suffered from it, maybe uh, without even knowing, knowing, and we got <laughs> well. So there's no stigmatization about it. But glad you safe and well. Yeah, that's that's the good thing. Uh, Bora why? Bora hi. Yes. You know, Morgan is also coming on the show <laughs> for the first time. Looks like she's a Man United fan, very proud, <laughs> donning the jersey. How are you? Wow, good to be here. Thank you for having me. Nice to you see you. You are a proud friend. United fan. But do I say it's evident? You know? oh, it's evident. <laughs> yes. Are you getting beaten this afternoon by West Bromwich Albion? Says who? No. Uh, today, actually, it's quite unfortunate. I have to support my team. Eh? <laughs> quite the, unfortunate. Yes. <laughs> Last time I was supporting Everton. So today I have to support Manchester United, and I'm very confident we are going to win this match. So everyone out there, Manchester United, Kichwa. <laughs> so your support for United is flip-flopping. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Brett, yes. we saw what happened in international football, UEFA Nations League. A lot of people are complaining about this tournament and why UEFA came up with this, but maybe it's because of revenue. Uh, okay. So, you have a Nations League, Spain, 6, German, nil. What okay. a demolition, what happened? That, uh, is it high time Joachim Block and... I can say it's, it was... Sucked. No, I, I don't think so. This is just a, a setback. If, if, if it can, happens in football. Yeah, it happens in football. And uh, as I, I wanted to say, this COVID-19 uh, 19 thing has really affected football. Look, look at even the top leagues. Setbacks here and there, you know, the small teams look at the trash, uh, trashing of uh, Liverpool by Aston Villa. So I think it's a setback and uh, it sends uh, Joachim Lowe back to the drawing board. Uh, right now, uh, most of the teams are trying to uh, bring up the young guys into the senior, uh, senior teams. Uh, look at England. If you look at the team which played uh, uh, the last game uh, before we were resuming the league, uh, was a very young team. Uh, so I think Coaches are trying to bring up the young lads, and this sometimes brings a setback. So let him go back to the drawing board, and uh, I think hopefully uh, he'll get back to the right track uh, when we return uh, uh, for the next leg of international games. You see, when he's speaking about matters international football, and we're speaking about managers in charge of various teams, Joachim Law's name has to feature prominently because he's been there. He won World Cup with. Germany in 2014. He's bagged a lot of accolades. He's been a mainstay with the German national team. I don't know, do we continue giving him time? Because, you know, dynamics of football keep changing and even we saw the year of the likes of Sir Alex Ferguson, Arsene Wenger, Jose Mourinho's tactics are being referred to as outdated, old-fashioned and the new and fresh blood is coming up. Is it high time Mze can uh, be put to rest <laughs> so that we have a new man at the helm of no. the diamond shaft. I, I think uh, Maxwell, you are, you are quick to judge eh? because uh, <laughs> given his age, I believe with age comes with Tom. So, uh, and looking back at what he has achieved, eh? uh, well, as you've mentioned, eh? look at uh, 2014 World Cup, look at uh, FIFA Confederation in Russia 2017. And then uh, look at his squad. He he has these young players. There is Kimmich, there is Nabli, there is Sane. So I only believe that uh, he needs to work on his tactics and find a way where all these players can partner together. And uh, judging by what Germany has done before, may I believe Joachim Roy is the is the best man 
to take them to the next level. And then uh, we cannot just overrule his uh, achievements over one loss. Eh? Look at Manchester, Juzi to Mechapua. So I, I still support him. But you see putting Manchester United and German in one sentence. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's disrespecting the German national team. No, the, we have achieved. And world giants. <laughs> we have achieved so many things in the previous history of football. So I believe we, if Manchester United were to sit on the same table with German players, I Mbali sana, but uh, Joachim Lowe should stay because I don't think there's another man that is uh, good for that job. So I support him. You support him. Yeah. Apart from that, we saw what happened France against Sweden. Olivier Giroud, man, he's scoring when he wants for the national team, but when it comes to matters club commitments, Frank Lampard has been putting him on the sidelines and he has a lot of records for the national team. He scored a brace yes. against Sweden mm -hmm. and uh, remember he was. Uh, a regular starter <coughs> during 2018 World Cup in Russia with France and he won a World Cup yes. title with them. He's the second highest goal scorer beside Thierry Henry in France uh, footballing scoring history and uh, I think in the most recent years he's the overall top scorer for yeah. the national team. Yeah, you know, I think he's he's been the most underrated uh, player uh, for France, if I can say so. Because look at what uh, Olivier Giroud at club level when he was playing uh, for Arsenal. You know, he was a regular starter uh, scoring goals. Uh, he won uh, accolades with Arsenal. Uh, going, to, uh, going to Chelsea, I think Lambert is trying to transform uh, that team to a young side. Look at his uh, strikers. He has uh, Abraham. He, bro he brought the legs of Wana into the team. So uh, these are uh, these are player who was uh, uh, brought in uh, with a lot of uh, money for Chelsea. So this is why uh, sometimes Frankie is uh, is uh, he has no choice but to play him. But still, he should give Olivia Giroud at, at club level uh, chances. We have. Uh, a lot of uh, competitions. We have the FA Cup that resumes in January. Uh, we have at least he can get a few minutes in the. He gets at least a, a very very few minutes for the in the EPL, but he should get more because he's proven at uh, at a national level that he can score. Being only seven goals shy of theory is not a joke, and uh, you know uh, international games are not as many as league games. They are few, but he has scored. I think. Uh, a goal, a goal after every two matches for the for the national team. So I think Frankie should be able to at least try to reintegrate him back into the team so that he can help Chelsea. Because right now uh, Abraham is misfiring. Yes, he's not scoring goals. Uh, Timo Werner doing well. So I think he should at least now give him a chance behind Timo Werner to at least get some few minutes in the APL so that he can help the young uh, lads that uh, Lampard is trying to mentor. Olivier Giroud has played at the big stage when it comes to Matters Club football. He's played for both Arsenal and Chelsea. One of a few players who've defied that, you know, it's <coughs> rare to get someone playing for <laughs> both, except for the likes of Ashley Cole, yeah, Nicholas Anelka, William yeah. Gallas. But you have William now. William. Oh, you have William right now <laughs> yeah. as we speak. But, you know, at Arsenal, even Arsenal club supporters used to say that, you know, uh, Olivier Giroud was sort of amzigo to the club <laughs> until when he moved to Chelsea and he started scoring goals and crucial goals when it matters most he comes in for the club right now he's not getting playing time at the Stamford Bridge because of you know the newly acquisitions you know the likes of Timo Werner and now Abraham Tam is also there so a lot of competition as far as the attacking department is concerned how well can Frank Lampard fit in Olivia Giroud so that he also plays and gets playing time. You know, one, wa, one thing, Maxwell, eh? one, I support France, eh? and I'm a fan of Giroud, but when he used to play for Arsenal, Kidogo, that one was a conflict of interest. I, I think he's, uh, he's not celebrated enough, he's underutilized, and, uh, well, some people are arguing maybe it's because of his age, he's, he's old, and uh, Frank is trying to work around young players, but I believe he has what we call talent, and uh, he can perform and he can deliver so uh 
when we see what he's doing at, at France, eh, playing for the national team and him scoring, eh, this should be a wake-up call. I think it's about time uh, Frank Lampard found a way where he can utilize him because uh, Chelsea are not way better to say that right now we need to let go of Giroud. Eh? Mm -hmm. Like we are at that point where now we are trying to contend us. I think they have a very long way to go. So uh, Frank Lampard is, uh, is trying to, to behave in a manner like... Uh, Giroud, ah, you've overstayed your welcome. And looking at uh, his former predecessor, Antonio Conte, he held Giroud in very high regards. He would utilize him once in a while and you would mm. see Giroud would come in as a super sub and he and used score, to score. score. Yeah. Yes. So uh, I think it's about time. Eh? He should not, Frank Lampard should not be too quick to let Giroud go. And they might regret it in, <coughs> in future. And then I think uh, uh, the system uh, Frank is using right now, uh, trying to get the balls in uh, from the midfield, you know, uh, I think Giroud has been one of the, I think he's a striker who is uh, more of a team player than uh, than just scoring. Yeah, that's why, yes. that's, yeah that's he also has leadership skills. Yeah, that's why you look at uh, the, the World Cup that they won. Giroud never scored a single goal, yeah. but played all the games. It, it's true. Yeah. So that, that team play, I think, can really help the young g uh, guys, uh, Frankie's trying to gel. So yeah. I think and once he comes back, I think he should uh, at least uh, throw some minutes uh, to him, at least to prove what he's doing at the national level. Uh, uh, and he's also uh, a first to reckon with uh, in the dressing room as well. He can mentor these young kids. Yeah, he's the most experienced and yeah. he can influence some few positive decisions. Anyway, away from that, we saw Pep Guardiola, Manchester City tactician, extending his contract by, by two years. At the age, had contrary <coughs> to expectations. Most people had thought that probably Pep was on his way out of the city, but now extending his stay. I think uh, I, don't know what I, I, I also didn't, I also didn't ex expect him to sign a new contract because now uh, there's this, uh, there's been this issue of the Ch uh, Champions League and uh, it has really it's been quite elusive. For yeah, him. yeah, yeah. So I, I remember Paul Scholes. Was it Paul Scholes uh, uh, saying that you know Pep, Pep Guardiola doesn't always stay around for long, but now he has divided those odds signing a new t uh, two year contract with the club. So I think what. He's trying to do uh, right now uh, is to at least say, you know, I'm one of the best coaches around. Let him give uh, another go at the Champions League so that he can see whether he can uh, uh, come on top of uh, these uh, big uh, teams in, in Europe. So I think for him, it's a challenge and uh, a welcome challenge for England because Tateta, what he has been able to learn from him. So I think he can bring a lot uh, into the uh, English game and uh, try to mentor some of the young coaches around. So for him to stay is, that I think, a very big welcome uh, for English uh, football. Every man's dream, especially for a football manager, is to win the elite European club title. That's Champions League. That is something Pep did with Barcelona after replacing Frank Rijkaard mm -hmm. a few years ago. At <coughs> Bayern Munich, it failed to happen and at City it's not bearing fruits. Is he on course for Champions League title in the next few two years he's extended his contract? Yes, it's it's practically possible eh? because looking back at uh, what City has achieved in the previous years eh, when Pepper has been coaching them, I think uh, them winning the Premier League that was, uh, that was guaranteed and uh, Within two years, he has enough time now to build a team that can, can go out there and deliver. Because uh, looking at the players, eh, we have the likes of Jesus, we have uh, Aguero, Starring, De Bruyne. So uh, these, are, these are football materials that you're sure of. They can deliver, they are going to win matches. So I, I think he has made the right call. And uh, there were rumors that Messi is going to sign at uh, Man City. So that again is something to look forward to. And if Messi were to come to Man City, then uh, with Bas sorry with uh, with Guardiola, you're sure. No, this is a Champions League material. This is a team that is going to to win. So we we are going to keep our eyes open. Let, let's see what happens in the next two years. In the last two years, when City <coughs> won English Premier League title before Liverpool uh, reclaimed it from them, City had, you know, a lot of world-class players, quality on the bench, and it was, you know, very dangerous <coughs> playing against a City, and like it is to, today. I don't know. I what might have happened between the two years? Live alone, 
just parting ways with a few players, Leroy San who mm. left to Bayern yeah. and who else. I think most of their players are still there intact and except for David Silva yeah, who, who left for you know Spanish yeah. fo club football. What must might have transpired? I think uh, you know Champions League is all uh, another uh, uh, another league whereby you need to have that experience uh, in order to win it. Uh, if you look at City, they have been able right now. Uh, uh, those two years when Guardiola arrived, they did not have that experience uh, playing in, the, in, the, in that top league. But right now, uh, if and if you look at the the, uh, the results uh, of this uh, this season's uh, uh, I mean last season's Champions League, they have been able to improve, and that's why we're seeing now. Once he has signed these two years, he's, he has now that time at least, maybe in the first year, to at least. Uh, reach uh, maybe the semi-finals or all the finals of the Champions League. That experience has been able to be uh, to be brought to be instilled in these players. And right now, the way they are playing as a team, as a unit, uh, they have not been able to bring uh, in a lot of play, uh, players. They just brought in one or two uh, this uh, 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 the last transfer window. So I think that team has. has been able to gain that experience in order to uh, challenge in the Champions League. So let's give him another one year and see whether they can be able to transform that experience into uh, results that are needed in the Champions League. This season alone, are they on course for uh, challenge for Premier League title? There's a possibility, but then again, looking at uh, the, the nature of the dressing room, eh, that they have a couple of setbacks. You, you find that uh, most players, are either if it's not COVID-19, they're out on injury. But I believe City, City has the resources, so maybe during the, the January transfer, we do that. they can make a few changes, maybe make uh, some new signings, and then uh, who knows, they might deliver. But I believe uh, Guardiola rushed into selling Sunny. He was he was resourceful at Man City, and I, I I am sure no player yet has filled in his shoes. So that again is still a, a challenge. But uh, well, who knows? Man City, uh, well, it's Manchester, of course. So I I <laughs> believe they are going for, for, for the, the other doing of Manchester City. I think has been you know their defensive laps, a lot of injuries. Uh, Laporte got injured, yeah. and Nathaniel Ake alongside. Uh, well, this player who got signed from Benfica, a defender, their partnership has not been doing very well. And you know Fernandinho also getting all this 34 right now yeah, as we yeah. speak. So <coughs> his defensive midfielding uh, prowess I, I think drastically I, dwindling. I think uh, there's, there has been an undoing uh, uh, for Manchester City in signing their defenders. Look at... Uh, the departments in which uh, they have signed the most expensive players, actually it's the defense. Look at uh, starting the likes of Stones, the likes of Mangala, they have signed a lot of defenders, expensive defenders. I think their, their, their acquisitions have not been able to live to the expectations that uh, they were needed. So I think uh, right now, uh, Man City, uh, if you look from the midfield going forward, uh, the wings, the centre forwards look at Aguero. He's been able to make his name. He's come back into the team, but due the, the, to the injury that he had, he has not uh, been able to click the way we used to know Aguero. Actually, is him and uh, Suarez uh, were the two of the most complete strikers, all-rounder strikers uh, that we we had at the time. But right now, Aguero, because of the injury, he's not been able to click. So I think. Uh, that defensive de department has been uh, a failing, but the other de uh, departments have been the doing. Actually, they have de been the ones which uh, have helped the, the team to lift the EPL titles. So for, for, for the defensive department, they have had a lot of failings. And I think if they are not going to work on that, they'll just continue signing those the defenders, expensive defenders, and they'll not be able to, to perform well. But the other departments, as we are seeing, they are as a team, uh, the experience they have had. Then I think going forward, uh, actually even the results that they have had uh, uh, this uh, season's uh, Champions League, the way they have started, has been uh, a good sign for them. They are scoring goals left, right and centre. So for the uh, defence department, I think they need to work on it. On the players they have and those that they are going to uh, acquire, maybe in the January transfer window, if need be. So uh, they are 
is where they should be able and to And talking about yeah. English Premier League football, a lot of fixtures lined up this particular afternoon. Newcastle will be playing host to Chelsea in an early kickoff coming your way at 3.30 p.m. East African time. Aston Villa uh, will, be continue, will be hoping to continue with their high-flying form when they host Brighton, Tottenham, Hotspurs up against Manchester City. And that looks like a pulsating clash. <laughs> of the weekend, of course, coming your way at 8.30 p.m., then United in a late kick-off tie against the newly promoted West Brom, which are Albion. So, City against Tote. <laughs> we were just talking about Pep. Jose Mourinho uh, up against Pep <coughs> Guardiola. Both managers of pedigree, world-class, and both clubs uh, having uh, huge ambitions of Premier League title and even qualification to Champions League football. You know, I'm not a big fan of Mourinho, eh? but uh, going by what he has been saying all around the media houses, eh? he's bragging, and then it, it breaks my heart because I see him taking advantage of his predecessor. <laughs> because looking at Tottenham right now, yes, they sit uh, second position in the Premier League table, eh? and they have been unbeaten in the last seven matches. But uh, Pochettino built this team, you see? So I, I don't see why he should brag. Well, he has done a lot of uh, overhaul in the whole team, eh? but uh, he has no right to brag. It's too early, you see? So I, I think he needs time to, to keep working on the team, but he has uh, delivered, judging by the outcome of uh, Pochettino's last matches before he was sacked. But uh, going with what Guardiola is doing at Man City, it will be a hard fixture, but I, I believe in Manchester. So I'm, uh, I'm, I'm going with a Man, a Man City win. <laughs> this right game now. would be won in which department? Let's say because the front line for City looks shaky. Sergio Aguero, I don't know whether he will be making a comeback into the team, but of course Harry Kane is fit to start uh, tonight for Spurs. Is there any way the attacking department, how sharp, I think, will determine uh, the outcome? I think this is a game which will be very speedy. Uh, when you look at uh, the kind of players that both sides have, uh, if Aguero is going to make a comeback, uh, then and, uh, he, will be, he will be the one who will decide this fixture, either him or uh, Hurricane. Because uh, for Hurricane, he's been scoring this season, uh, so I think... It will be a tough one. Mourinho being a tactician that we know he is, and uh, the players, Bale is back, the players that he's been able to acquire, uh, I think it's gonna, it's gonna be a tough one for me. Uh, the midfield, uh, the, the supply from the wings, every department has to be uh, at least uh, sharp in order to maybe nick in a goal or two. Although I see a lot of goals in, in this fixture. So as we wind up, of course, time on, not on our side, Brian Kiman looks like he's harassing me that <laughs> we take a commercial break, but I would just wish that we submit our final thoughts on what is expected. Yourself, a United diehard, what are you looking forward to? You predicted a win for Man United? Yeah, I, I hope today we, we pray with more speed, uh, more, more tenacity. I, I hope that we attack more because uh, that is what we, we've been lacking in the past few days. But given by what we, our performance has been in, in our home cloud this season, eh, I, I still believe we have what it takes. So Manchester 3, West Brom 0. How about yourself? Arsenal is playing <laughs> tomorrow. You support yeah, Arsenal. Yeah, I understand of course. so. Of course, of course. Uh, I, I think... Uh, this uh, this season has started as uh, to be the most unique season we've seen uh, uh, during the recent footballing s seasons because of this coronavirus uh, pandemic. No fans in the and, th and this shows you that you know when uh, we say that you know the fans are the uh, 12th player in the pitch then you should be able to look at Man United. Uh, they have not won. I think they have won maybe one or two matches at home. They have lost a lot of them and. Many of the teams uh, have lost matches that we did not expect them to lose because we don't have the fans in the stadium. So right now is just uh, for the coaches to just do their best. That is it. Otherwise, that's because of the fans, fans. <laughs> <laughs> because of the fans. That's why. That's why we beat United at Old Trafford for the first time in the Premier League 
since 2006. I wish you scored on uh, open play eh? because it's, it, uh, it's no problem. It's a win. <laughs> well, yeah, you. you <laughs> a win is a win. Yes. Well, indeed, of course. Touchline continues until three o'clock. This has been the fans on you now. Uh, Morgan coming in for the first time, and Fred Opend, of course, he's been missing in action, feeling unwell, but glad that he's still alive and kicking and back on the show. And of course, it's been a pleasure having you, gentlemen, and some good and interesting ladies. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Why <are> you <laughs> <laughs> and uh, patriotic United fan. I've never seen a United fan who is very uh, passionate like she is and very proud to don a jersey in public limelight considering <laughs> their disastrous performance. Anyway, we take a short break. We'll be back shortly. Don't go away. It continues until 3 o'clock.